Hey, what's up everyone? Adam here with Barbie Got This, and today I'm gonna to go over everything you need to know about the Fighters Guild in the Elder Scrolls Online. This guild is a very important line for many, many reasons, and I wanna show you why. Plus, I wanna give you the best methods of leveling this line, and it's very, very easy to do that, by the way. And that way, when you create a character, or a tune, or an alt, or whatever, you will always have the best way to level this guild if you wanna quickly level up the line. Lastly, I want to go over the daily quests of this line as well, and with that I will show you the rewards that you can get from these. And as always, you can come by and ask any questions in the comments or my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash this on Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. I am on holiday currently, but I will be back for the new year, but the link to the Twitch is in the description. You can also come by our Discord as well. The link to that is in the description as well. And I want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you for all the support. If you'd like to become a patron and get early access to videos and much, much more, check that out in the description below. Lastly, check out our website at BrawlbyGotThis.com. So, the Fighters Guild. This guild is in the base game, so no need to have any DLC or expansions to do this. What I would suggest is you go immediately to your starting zone and grab the Fighters Guild quest lines. Here are some locations you can go to to start the quest. For the Aldermary Dominion, you can go to Ardon and then go to Vocal Guard. So here's Ardon. You can go to Vocal Guard down here and you can go to the Fighters Guild right here. For Daggerfall Covenant, you can go to Glenumbra, then go to the city of Daggerfall. You can go to the Fighter Guild, Fighters Guild here. For Ebonheart Pact, you can go to Stone Falls, then you go to Davin's Watch, and the Fighters Guild is right here. Or you could just go to Western Skyrim as well if you have Greymoor. Western Skyrim has all the guilds here as well. Here's this right here, and they're in basically a lot of zones. So you have those options right there for you, whichever one you want to go to. And the reason I immediately suggest this is because you will get some experience for when you're a lower level and that'll boost you up a little bit. So that will just help. And you can also start your mages guild and all that stuff as well. It's something again that you can start immediately as well. And I will say, if you want to check out any of my other guild guides, I have Undaunted, Mages, and the Sigic Order guides in the description or the top of the screen. But you have a quest line attached to the Fighters Guild that is honestly really, really fun. And it's something that's pretty uh, interesting to complete because when you complete it, you will get the option to go to the Earth Forge. And the Earth Forge is located in your uh, alliances. So the Earth Forge for the Aldermary Dominion is in uh, Reaper's March and it's in Ralka. So you go to Ralka, which is right here. You go to the Fires Guild and there will be a portal there. For the Ebonheart Pact, it is in the zone of the Rift and then it's in Riften. You go to Riften, uh, your Fighters Guild is right here. And for the Daggerfall Covenant, yours is in Bankarai and that is in the city of Evermore and it's right here. And so those portals will take you to the Earth Forge. What you can do in the Earth Forge is you can actually craft some set items, some craftable set items. We have some of these actually in our guild hall, but if you're on another platform or whatever, you can use this to craft Kagranax Hope and Orgnum's Scales. Kagranax Hope is a solid healer set and Orgnum is a solid tank set. So it is really cool to complete this line, plus you will get achievements and all that stuff associated with it. And now let's go ahead and go to the skill line. This is the easiest skill line for guilds to level in the game, hands down. But before we talk about the best ways to level this uh, skill line, I wanna show you the actual skills and the passives that make this such a good guild line to level. So you've got you know, four, five passives, um, four skills, and an ultimate. The ultimate Dawnbreaker is amazing. This arms herself with Meridia's Sacred Sword and dispenses, uh, dispenses her retribution, dealing 9,233 uh, physical damage to enemies in front of you and an additional one, uh, 11,337 physical damage over six seconds. This is used on a lot of stamina DPS characters, just slotting this. Uh, you don't actually use this, but it's used a lot uh, based off of its actual morphs that you get. And the reason they slot it is because of some passives actually down here that we'll talk about here in a second. But the next skill is Silver Bolts, but this uh, morphs to a skill called Silver Leash. And what Silver Leash does is it's uh, a pull basically for tanks. And it's a pull that any tank can use because some tank classes 
um, don't have any pools in their actual skill you know, uh, professions here. And so this is an automatic pool that you can put on your bar as a tank. And it's just really, really good. The next one is circle of protection. And this actually morphs to a uh, one called ring of uh, preservation. And that is used a lot on like stamina DPS characters as well. This, it gives your uh, allies in you a minor protection and minor endurance, which reduces the damage taken by 8%, increasing your stamina recovery by 10%. And now, and then if you do ring of preservation, it also heals allies inside for the duration but um it's just something that same dps's can put on their bar if they want to heal and it's it's a really nice skill to have and again slotted for some of these passives the next one is uh expert hunter and a lot of people use the morph of camouflaged hunter and camouflaged hunter what the reason that they use it is just because when it's slotted you gain minor savagery or you gain major uh, savagery which increases your weapon critical rating by 2,191. You also gain minor berserk for five seconds after you deal critical damage from sneak, increasing your damage done by 8%, but it's mainly for that major savagery. And again, when it's slotted, dealing critical damage from the flank of an enemy grants minor berserk as well. So it's just a nice slotted skill that a lot of people use. And the last skill is one that's been used for a long time and that is Trap Beast. And a lot of people use the Barb Trap Morph what this does is just by, uh, you know, when you put this out before like a fight, when it triggers, it deals uh, 4,000 or it deals 411 physical damage and an additional 2,952 physical damage over 12 seconds. And it grants you minor force, which increases your critical damage by 10% for the duration, which it lasts a long, long time, y'all. And the morph of this increases the duration of the damage over time and minor force. So it's just a really good morph for DPS rolls. Now, let's go into the passives, and this is where a lot of people use these uh, in this guild. And you've got Intimidating Presence, which this allows you just to intimidate NPCs, um, reduce the stamina cost of your fighter's guild abilities by 15% too. So it is a good one because that allows you to activate your abilities for a lot cheaper. But again, um, this allows you to intimidate NPCs. You got Slayer, which increases your weapon damage by 3% for each fighter's guild ability slotted. So that's why people slot Dawnbreaker, they have, you know, Trap Beast as well, sometimes Camouflage Hunter. So it's a really good passive to have. You've got Banish the Wicked, which you generate three ultimate when you kill an undead, danger, or werewolf. And you there, there's a lot of these in the world, y'all, so you're going to generate a lot of ultimate from this. You then have Skilled Tracker. Your Fighter's Guild abilities deal an additional 20% damage to undead, daedra, and werewolves, and that's also a solid uh, passive to have in my opinion. Uh, and then you've got Bounty Hunter. This allows you to accept bounty quests from the Fighters Guild in Cyrodiil, which I will talk about here later in the guide. Now that we have went over the skill line, let's talk about how you actually level this. You can level this by destroying Dark Anchors or Dolmens or whatever you want to call them, and also by killing Daedra or Undead. This is extremely easy to level if you just sit down and just knock it out. I wanna go over a few methods that you can do to level this line if you wanna do this the most efficient way. The two methods that I will suggest are pretty easy, y'all. One is just doing domains. You'll see right here, I'm going to Alakir Desert. Alakir Desert is the best domain area in the game to do domains because the domains are the closest that they possibly can be to way shrines and there's just people running them all the time but dolmens are the quickest way and another reason why dolmens are so great is because every dolmen that you complete you're going to get fighters guild experience for it and every enemy that spawns in a dolmen in at least in the base game is going to be a daedra or an undead it's really really easy to level your fighters guild by doing just dolmens but it's really easy y'all um again Look how fast the dolmen goes down. The boss is basically already dead. We get our chest and we get our experience. I get 20 fighters guild experience for doing the dolmen. Okay, so this is also a really good way to level as well. But you'll see again, here's this dolmen and this way shrine, the goat heads oasis way shrine. You can just travel to certain players in our guild um, and to get these way shrines, it's very easy. You've got this dolmen here, which is the uh, Azwala Stables Way Shrine. And you've got this dolmen here, which is the uh, Tigonus Dolmen. And you've got the um, Shrikes Airy Way Shrine. This is the triangle. It goes in a triangle. So it goes here, 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 or here, or it goes the other way. What you can do when you get in a zone is you can go uh, backslash zone on PC, and you can just do X, Y, or Z. If you do that, 
it will automatically put you in a group a lot of times because someone will have one set up in the zone and you can get speed boosts and you can get all kinds of other things as well. If you have like no mount speed, it'll help you get to the places quicker and you can teleport to them if you don't have the way shrines. So it is a great way to level your fighter's guild uh, skill lines. Now, if you just simply can't fathom dolmens at all because they are boring or too repetitive, then might I suggest another method? I think this method is the other best way to do this, depending on how fast you can do this method. Um, and that is going to the Cold Harbor Zone and killing Overland enemies there, or doing Vaults of Madness dungeon. So Cold Harbor's right here, just running around in the Overland, or doing the Vaults of Madness, because every enemy in this zone and dungeon is going to be an Undead or a Daedra. And the dungeon's very fun to do. It's got relevant sets in it. Um, if you can get a bunch of DPSs together, you can just run the dungeon over and over again and just kill a lot of the mobs in there. And it's really, really simple to do. So I think that is another amazing way to level this line. But in my opinion, these two methods are just the best ways to level the Fighter's Guild because it's just, it's so quick. I mean, you can level it so very quick if you just sit down and actually do it. So now... The last part that I want to talk about with the Fighters Guild is the daily quests. A lot of people don't actually know about these, but these daily quests can be picked up again in all the places uh, in your capital city for your alliances. So for the Aldermary Dominion, you can go uh, to the Grotwood zone here, go to Elden Root, and just go to um, the uh, in here to this big tree, and there'll be the Fighters Guild will be in there, and you can get your daily quests there. It'll have the blue icon above. The NPC for the uh, Ebonheart Pact, you can go to um, Deshaun and you can go here to Mournhold and the Fighters Guild is right here and get your daily quest there. For the Daggerfall Covenant, you can go to uh, Stormhaven and then go to Wayrest and the Fighters Guild is right here and you get your daily quest there. Now, these quests can be shared and so you can do 15 of these technically a day if you get the uh, if you get different ones. And what these daily quests are, they're just going to have you do three random uh, dolmens in a zone. It's really, really easy, y'all. You just go to the zone, do the dolmens. And once you do those, you will get a reward box. You'll get you know, experience. You'll get gold. And in those reward boxes, you can get um, the Draugr motif style. So if you go to the outfit styles here and then type in Draugr, you can get any of these uh, type of motifs from these dailies. So again, it's a, it's pretty cool. It's like fashion, obviously. You know, you guys know I love fashion. You will also get rep for the guild, so you'll get experience that way as well. I don't think it's the best way, though, to level up your Fire's Guild, but it is a way that you can level it from those other two ways that I said. And for some people, that might be more fun than doing what I the two methods I said before, uh, but I like doing the other two methods just because it's a little quicker. Another thing you can do, like I said before, is you can do bounty quests in Cyrodiil. So if you unlock this passive, you get uh, you know, Fighter's Guild bounty quests in Cyrodiil. These bounty quests are just basically killing like NPCs in the world of Cyrodiil. And from those uh, bounty quests, again, you'll get gold, you'll get experience, you'll get alliance points, and you will get um, a Fighter's Guild bounty box which can give you uh, set items and things like that. So it's a really, really nice thing you can do if you're a, PV, uh, a PvP player and not a PvE player. And so those it does give you a lot of options to do that. But that is the end of the Fighters Guild video, y'all. It is a really, really simple guild and really fun to do. I recommend everyone starting it as soon as they get in the game because, again, there's a quest line. It's a fun quest line. There's amazing skills that are attached with this guild that you can use in your builds for in-game. And you can do some uh, daily quests to get all types of cool rewards like mo uh, motif style and things like that. But if you guys like this, again, make sure to like, heavy attack that bell icon, subscribe if you want to stay up to date on the content in the channel. You can also come and watch me play live on twitch.tv slash probably got this Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. Remember, I am on holiday right now, so I will be back in the new year, but the content in the channel will keep going on YouTube. And you can also join our Discord. The Discord and the uh, Twitch links are in the description. You can go to our website, BroadwayGotThis.com, and follow me on Twitter at BroadwayGotThis. But until next time, y'all, just have faith, be great, and I'll see you on ESO.